How's it going, YouTubers? This is Iron Fist LMS, coming to you from the LMS livestream over at Twitch TV. Now today, I have the very first episode of a new series that I'm going to be doing on the channel called the Weapon Spotlight. Now, the Weapon Spotlight is going to be covering some of the guns and weapons that you can purchase through the in-game store, either with your station cash or with your cert points that you earn in-game. And the idea behind it is to try and give you guys an idea of how these weapons perform, how they handle, what they're good at, what they're not good at, so you can get an idea before you drop your hard-earned cert points or money down on them. On today's episode, we're going to be covering a NC Heavy Assault Rifle, the very excitingly named GD-22-S. Yes, I know what you're thinking of all the names SOE could have given it, but we're just going to have to run with it for now. Now this rifle is going to cost you 375 of your precious cert points or a so far undetermined amount of station cash, but at current estimates you're looking about 5 bucks worth. Now if we take a look at the stats of this gun on the store, you're going to see an LMG with a fairly decent amount of damage per shot, a high rate of fire compared to the other LMGs in the category. It also has a very fast reload time, which is really, really important because one of the downsides to this gun is that it has a small magazine. It only, you only get 50 shots per clip, which is a lot smaller than the 100 you get with the other LMGs. But if you balance this out with the reload time, it really doesn't make too much of a difference. It just means that you have to pop back behind a corner and reload every so often. Now on paper it also has the same accuracy um, as the standard LMG but in the field it doesn't really play out like that because of the way that you use the gun. I'm going to demonstrate this in a quick little recoil test, first using full auto. As you can see the standard gorse saw has a higher vertical and horizontal recoil than the GD um, and so the GD is actually a little bit easier to aim. Now in terms of burst fire, this is what you're going to be wanting to use out in the field. You want to be taking 5 to 10 shot bursts and then waiting for the recoil to go down. Again, the GD has less recoil than the standard. Now I'm going to talk to you about the possible upgrades that you can buy for the GD uh, with the cert points in game. Uh, for the suppressors, you've got a choice of two. You've got the flash suppressor or the, uh, the standard suppressor. Now in my opinion, this is really, really situational and it's hard to determine which one is better, but I've been using the standard suppressor a lot simply because I like to go behind the enemy lines, I like to flank them, and the suppressor stops you appearing on the mini map as well as making a lot less noise, and uh, it also kills your muzzle flash, so it makes it a lot harder for enemies to be able to find you. I also stuck the standard reflex sight on, not the two times reflex sight, that is a pretty damn awful scope, you want to stick with the standard reflex sight, um, and it's going to help you aim a lot better than the iron sights. Of course, you also have the option of putting something on the rail. Now, a lot of players like to use the laser, the laser dot sight or the flashlight. I have no idea why. I guess you'd use the laser sight if you want to hip fire a lot, but you definitely shouldn't be hip firing an LMG. Um, not only that, but those two upgrades give your position away to the enemy so hard, especially at night time. It's like painting a big target on yourself saying, look I'm here, come and shoot me. So I avoid those like the plague. What I decided to put on was the forward grip upgrade. Now the forward grip upgrade actually reduces the amount of vertical recoil that you get during sustained fire. This is really, really useful at medium to long range simply because it means you can get more accurate shots off in each burst, meaning that enemies die quicker and you use less ammo doing it. So to summarize, between the two guns, the standard machine gun has a higher amount of damage per shot and a larger magazine, but the GD compensates for that by having a much higher rate of fire, a much faster reload time, and is overall more accurate. So you can go ahead and decide between the two. Now I'm going to finish this spotlight video up by showing you guys a couple of gameplay clips that I took while using the GD live on the server. Now the first clip that I've got is me defending the Rashnu Biolab from the TR attacking it. The TR have obviously got a Sundra spawn point parked under the air pad and are using the jump pads to get up here and try and get into the base. I'm also going to take this opportunity to say to SOE what a great job their design team has done on the landing pads here at Biolabs. Before they were an absolute nightmare for the attacking team to even try and get in the base because they were just simply a killing ground. There was nothing to hide behind. You just jumped up into certain death. 
Now with this added like uh, scenery and barricades and stuff that they've put in, it really makes the fight a bit more dynamic and gives the attacking team a genuine chance of being able to get into the base if there's anybody defending. Now I'm actually using these new barricades here as a pretty good defensive point to give myself some cover from the aircraft as well as any TR that try and jump up and get behind me. Um, I'm actually focusing any TR that jump up closer to me as a priority. Um, even if I'm close to killing somebody at the long range, I will switch targets because I really don't want some light assault getting up behind me with a shotgun and taking me out. Now it's quiet. Quiet on the pad, there's nobody else jumping up, so I take this opportunity to snap round and take out the TR that are hiding behind the barricades on the other side of the pad. As you can see, the GD really performs well at this kind of short to medium range. It absolutely devastates people, especially if you're able to aim properly and can get those headshots in. I actually run out of all my ammo here, so I quickly run back inside and go and try and resupply myself from a terminal. Now the next clip is a bit of fun. I hot, I logged into the game and didn't have much time, so I simply hot dropped onto the crown, which was currently being held by the VS. I did a quick check around the outsides to make sure that there was no obvious threats, and began taking out those pesky camping snipers that like to sit up there and snipe down onto you. Unfortunately, I picked out the wrong weapon loader and went with the flash suppressor rather than the standard suppressor, so all the VS around the spawn room definitely know I'm on top of it now because I'm showing up as a massive red dot on their minimap. Now at this point I'm getting really, really worried that a light assault is going to try and jump up behind me and ruin my fun, so I keep checking the outside of the building to make sure that's not going to happen. Also at this extreme close range you really don't need to worry about burst firing it, you could just use it straight up in full auto because the cone of fire and the recoil really don't make that much of a difference when you're this close. Just hold the trigger down and watch stuff die. Now unfortunately this guy saw me and got a few shots into me before I could even turn around so I probably should have gone back and let my shields recharge, that was my bad, I just wanted to uh, get a few kills. So that's it for this episode of the Weapon Spotlight. I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel. And as always, I welcome any comment, feedback or suggestions that people have on this video in order to help me produce better content in the future. Thank you all very much for watching and until next time guys, take it easy.